There's the artificial kind of seeking forgiveness, astaghfirullah, 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 which for some people is so artificial, like Ali radiallahu anhu saw somebody doing it and said to him, your istighfar needs istighfar. Because that's just, it's just rolling off your tongue. There are some things that keep you and me from seeking Allah's forgiveness. It has to do with expectation. Some people deep in their mind have internalized that I have done way too much messed up stuff. Allah probably doesn't like me very much. Some people even go as far as to say, I've heard them say, Allah hates me. Allah hates me. Allah doesn't like me. Allah is angry with me. I've done a lot of bad things. I knew Allah doesn't want me to do this, 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 and I did it anyway, and I did it over and over and over again. So I'm basically off of Allah's good books. My prayers don't mean it. And when people internalize that, you know what they do? I'm a bad person. Could you make dua for me? Because I'm disqualified already. So you need to make dua for me. Because I'm hoping at least Allah will listen to you. Maybe I have a chance, because there's no way I, He's going to listen to me. You seem to have a much better connection with Allah than I do. Let me take you back, short reminder. Who was the offer made to by Nuh alayhi salam? Nuh alayhi salam was making this offer to one of the most rebellious nations on earth. Continuously rebellious. And he said, if you can just come ask forgiveness, not only will Allah give you forgiveness, He'll open up the world for you. In other words, you don't get to write yourself off. You don't get to say about yourself, I'm too far gone. Forgive, seeking forgiveness is not for you, maybe for somebody else, but I'm a lost case. I'm a terminal case. I'm beyond hope. I'm already done for. If anything, my mom will make dua for me. Or this one will make dua for me. And this is where shaitan comes. Shaitan uses that. When shaitan, he takes advantage of the hopelessness of people, and that's one of the doors to shirk. You know that? One of the doors to shirk. Why? Because then religions come, false religions come that say, you're too messed up, let Jesus forgive you. You be good to Jesus, He'll take care of God for you. He'll be in between. Or they'll place somebody else in between. This saint, go to his grave. Go ask him, be good to him, put some chocolate in front of his grave, and he'll ask Allah to take care of your problems. Because you're too messed up. You can't deal with Allah, He's too angry with you. He however was in Allah's good book, so you go through him. This is how shirk opens up. In other words, the essence of our direct connection with Allah, which is what Iman is, which is what Tawheed is, which is what La ilaha illallah is. The essence of it is, you get to ask Allah directly for what you need, and I'm telling you, I'm reminding myself, the thing we need the most, because it will take care of all of our needs, is seeking forgiveness. Now, there's a seeking of forgiveness by the tongue, and there's a seeking of forgiveness by the heart. Human beings tend to be defensive. If I criticize you for something, hey, I saw you said that, why did you say that? I didn't mean it like that. You don't understand what I was going through. Excuse me. You don't even understand the whole story. Hey, I noticed that you did this, this, this. You get defensive immediately. Human beings have good view of themselves, but they make lots of excuses. They keep throwing excuses. If you're going to seek Allah's forgiveness, you have to find a time. It doesn't matter if you don't know Arabic, and you only know Punjabi, and you only know Bangla, or Bahasa, or English, or Urdu. It doesn't matter. You speak to Allah and you genuinely admit to Him what you've done wrong and don't make excuses. It's really hard to do that. Because even when you stand in the mirror, you lie to yourself. You tell yourself, I'm not that bad. I have reasons for what I did. I have justification. I've been through a lot. But when you're going to come in front of Allah, you have to forget about justifying. Because all of your justifications, He knows them already. He knows what you were going through. He knew it was a tough time. He knew that this was overwhelming you, that was overwhelming you. I was under a lot of stress, Ya Rab, that's why I drank. Don't give him the reasons. He knows your reasons better than you do. You need to come to him openly, without any filters, without any hesitation, with no guard, with no shame. You're embarrassed to even admit this to anyone until you completely, openly admit to Allah how messed up you've been and how you've messed up completely openly. And as you do it, let me tell you, as you start verbalizing those things, I would be hard pressed to think tears are not going to roll down your eyes. It's impossible for a human being to open up so vulnerable, before Allah, before anyone, and especially Allah, to open up so much, and then not believe, not have tears roll down their eyes. Because that's, it's, it's a moment of weakness. To the world, you have to show yourself as strong and confident, and you're just fine. Everybody sees you and thinks everything's okay. But the only one who gets to know nothing is okay, there's a lot of problems, is Allah. You have to open up to Him completely, and then you're going to be in a position to ask for forgiveness. 
Then you get to beg in sajda. Then it turns into something else. Then it's not just astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. It's a real conversation with Allah. It's a real confession with Allah Azza wa Jal. That's a powerful, powerful thing. Try it for yourself. You have to find alone, time alone to yourself. You have to make sure nobody else is listening. You can't even do it in the middle of the night. You get up from the bed, the wife is still in bed, you sit on the side of the bed, Ya Allah, forgive me, and she's listening. You can't do that. Be in the car by yourself. Doesn't matter. Be somewhere alone. This is just your time with Allah. Your alone time with Allah. And verbalize it. Hear yourself say it. There's one thing to just whisper it. And if you're just gonna memorize a bunch of du'as in Arabic, and you don't even know what they mean, and just recite them, if you're gonna keep doing that, and those du'as are beautiful, they're powerful, but if your heart isn't speaking them, your tongue is speaking them, then you're not seeking istighfar yet. May Allah reward you for the dhikr that you're doing, for every harf that you're reciting, but that's not istighfar. Istighfar is something else. And when these tears come down, when this starts opening up, then the sky opens up. 